Hey everyone, welcome to Hillside Harrow's Homestead. Today we are making mozzarella cheese. It is an incredibly easy recipe, only takes about a half an hour, and um, I'm going to make a big batch because that's the size that we can make. Um, we use a little more mozzarella in our family. Um, we have a family of six. So um, feel free to make less if you want, um, but like I said, we've got a big family and we've got a milk cow, so we've got plenty of milk. So I'm actually going to put two gallons of milk into the mozzarella today. The kind of milk that you want to use it can be skim. The more fat you have, the better for making cheese. So skim is probably not the best that you want to. I mean, you can. You can make cheese from skim milk. 1%, um, 2% whole it doesn't matter. It can be pasteurized. Um, my milk is raw, so I prefer it that way. Um, but you can make cheese with pasteurized milk. You cannot make cheese with ultra pasteurized milk though. So if you're not able to um, get a hold of fresh milk from a farm, um, or you don't have fresh milk of your own, you can use milk from the grocery store that is pasteurized. Um, just make sure you don't get the milk that says ultra pasteurized. Okay, so mozzarella cheese does not take a whole lot of ingredients. Um, we have citric acid, and since I'm using two gallons of milk, um, the amount of citric acid that you want is three teaspoons. So obviously if you're only using one gallon of milk, it would be one and a half teaspoons of citric acid. Citric acid can be found in a grocery store, um, it can be found in some hardware stores where they have canning supplies. Um, so anywhere that you're going to have canning supplies, they do have citric acid. They're little bottles of citric acid. Or you can order your stuff from a cheese supply company. Um, I order mine from a cheese supply company just because I also have to order other things like Rennet. Um, so I might as well just, you know, do one-stop shop. Okay, so... For two gallons of milk, what I'm using today, three teaspoons of citric acid. Uh, the citric acid is what gives the um, mozzarella the stretch to it. Okay. Rennet. Um, there are different kinds of rennet. I do use animal rennet. Um, I believe that you can use vegetable rennet as well. Um, so for two gallons of milk, I use half a teaspoon of rennet. Um, again, if you only want to do one gallon, it would be a quarter of a teaspoon of rennet, okay? And then I use three teaspoons of um, salt. You can use cheese salt. Um, I use kosher salt. What you're going to do with your citric acid is you're going for three teaspoons for the two gallons, you're going to use two cups of water. And it's going to be cool water, so you don't want it lukewarm, you don't want it hot. Just cool water and you want to mix it until um, the citric acid is all dissolved. And then for your half a teaspoon of rennet, you're going to use half a cup of water, of cool water. So again, if you're only using one gallon of milk, you're going to cut that in half. It'll be a quarter of a teaspoon of rennet and a quarter cup of cool water. Okay, and our salt stays as salt. Um, the other things that you need, you need some sort of slotted spoon. I have a cheese spoon for myself. Um, works great, but a slotted spoon works well. You do need a thermometer. Um, you can use a candy thermometer, um, any kind of thermometer really that works. Um, you just need a working thermometer. Okay. Um, you can use molds. You don't have to use molds. Um, you can just simply um, keep a, your mozzarella in a ball and then just wrap it like in some saran wrap um, to hold its shape. I do use molds. Um, so, and then you just need one pot for hot water in and you need one pot to be able to put your milk together. Okay, so we'll move to the stove. I will go ahead and add my two cups of water to my three teaspoons of citric acid and then I will get my rennet ready. I don't need it right now, but I'll get it ready. Half a teaspoon with a half a cup of cool water.
So we've got our two gallons in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on. And I go ahead and leave it on high. For my stove, that's okay. Um, you're welcome to do a water bath where you have another um, pot underneath your milking pot um, with water in it so you can warm it up that way. Um, or you can do medium heat, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, for this, it has turned out just fine with it being on high. It's not gonna be on there real long. So uh, we're taking the citric acid and we are gonna go ahead and pour it in. I'm doing some up down motions, making sure that we get all that milk mixed in with that citric acid. All right, so now we get to play the waiting game. Stick our thermometer in here and we want that temperature to be at between 95 and 100 degrees. So when it gets about 95, we're gonna take this um, off of the heat and we'll cover the milk up and let it sit for a little bit. But for now, we're gonna just wait for it to get between 95 and 100 degrees. Uh, I'm also going to stir it fairly often so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom. Um, it doesn't burn in any way. All right, so here we are, reaching 100 degree markers. So I am going to scoot this puppy off of the heater. And at this point, this is where we add the cool rennet. I've got my rennet off the heat. So that was half a teaspoon for half a cup for two gallons. And I'm going to stir it in slowly. put a lid on this and set a timer for 10 minutes and just let it sit for 10 minutes and at the same time I have another pot right here which has just got some water and it doesn't matter well it it's not measured water it's just water that we're gonna heat up and we will put the cheese in here so it should um, be enough to at least cover your ball of mozzarella. So we're gonna heat that up uh, and it needs to get to, oh, 100 and, what do we want it to be? About 170 degrees. Um, and so uh, just keep this burner um, ready to go. After this has been warmed up, we need the water to stay at about 170 degrees when you are ready to be um, working with your mozzarella. So this is what's gonna warm your mozzarella up. Your hands are gonna be in this, so it is a hot process. You can wear gloves if you want. Um, I have a tendency to just play hot potato with the mozzarella back and forth. But um, you do need this to be to stay at about 170 degrees. So we can warm it up now um, and then just keep it warm until the mozzarella is ready. So until then, we're just going to sit here and wait 10 minutes for this cheese to sit. All right, here we are 10 minutes later. Okay, so we should have some curds. It is, if you 
put this in here, it just slices away. Okay, so what we want to do at this point is we just want to cut. I do have a curved knife. However, you don't have to have one of these. You can simply get a kitchen knife. It really doesn't matter. So we're going to cut these cards up. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now our water is warmed up as we need it to be, so we're going to put this, our curds, back onto this stove and we're going to warm it up. Okay, We are going to warm it up while we stir it to 115 degrees. Some of these curds into smaller pieces. As it gets warmer, it's going to start um, sticking to itself. These curds are going to start sticking to each other, and that's what we want. So what I'm doing by squeezing this up, the curds up against the side of this is trying to help encourage them to stick together as well. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and just dump this in the sink. I've got a colander that I'm going to um, go ahead and pour all of this through and drain the whey. Now, if you've got a use for this whey, here's a great opportunity to have a pot underneath and catch all of this uh, for future cooking projects. I don't have a use for it right now, so I'm okay with draining it at this point. Alright. Alright, so here is what we have. I want to be able to squeeze this together and get as much of that whey out of here as possible. Push it together, help it bind. All right, so this is where your hot water comes in handy. Move this over to the other part of the sink. All right. I stick my hands in here though I want to see what temperature it is so maybe 
a little hotter than I want, which means I'm just gonna have to act quick. Or it might have cooled down. Hmm. All right, it has cooled down and that's okay for now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It's about 150 degrees right now and that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my water. It is still hot though. Warm that up and it can take like 30 seconds or so uh, to get it warm down to the, the core of that. We want that core to get nice and warm and you will know when it's getting real warm when it starts sticking to everything it'll start sticking to your spoon and getting real um, stringy. I've got my salt ready right here um, and what I like to do is just add kind of a teaspoon at a time to the salt mix it in warm it up mix some more in warm it up see it it's not really sticking to my spoon so it means it's not quite as warm as I want it to be while I play with this I'm gonna add some salt to it. But while I do that, I'm gonna warm this, my water, back up on the stove. Get it warm again. All right. And I'm just gonna play with my mozzarella. Put some salt on it. Fold it in. You want to make sure that that salt gets nice and um, mixed in. Uh, if your cheese is not warm enough and that salt doesn't get mixed in real well, you will notice like little chunks, it looks like, of hard cheese. That's actually your salt. So, and it is not stretching real well, and the reason for that is because it's kind of cool. It needs to be warmer. The warmer it is, the better it's going to stretch for us. same thing try to get this water warmed up just a little bit more I want to get some more stretch out of this cheese trying to heat up a bit all right the salt can be either more than three teaspoons or less um, it really is up to you that's a personal choice We've found that three teaspoons is, seems to work well for us. We like that. All right. Let's try it again. All right. Let's try this. That stretch is a little easier. It's gotten warmed up a bit. That's what we want. All right, I'm gonna play with this. I'm gonna warm that water up one more time. Add the last of our salt. Start working it in. cooling down it cools down pretty quickly so warm that up get that warmed up so we can get all that salt dissolved in there some people I have seen put salt in the water 
and don't actually add salt to the cheese, but they put the salt in the water. And so when they do this with it, um, the salt is supposed to get into the cheese. However, I, ha I did do it that way, and I did not taste any of the salt in the cheese at all. So I feel like we had more chance of tasting some of that salt in there with, you know, having more flavor to your mozzarella um, with just adding the salt directly to your cheese. Hot, hot, hot. I'm just checking, looking in the cheese, making sure I don't find any pieces of salt in here. Not finding any, I'm gonna warm it up one more time. Then give it a good stretch and put it in my mold. this in half. I'm going to put it in two molds because it's going to overflow in one mold. So. And then from this point, I'll just put it in the refrigerator. I'll let it get just a slight rough skin um, on the top of it, um, just enough that it's going to cool down and uh, keep that shape. That's your beautiful mozzarella. I wish you could see it better. The light isn't great here, and I apologize for that. But isn't that pretty? Beautiful mozzarella does make you want to eat some pizza. Or <laughs> You know what I like is having a slice of um, tomato, a slice of mozzarella, and then some fresh basil on it, and putting some balsamic vinegar with some oil and putting it over. Oh, it is so good. And there is your mozzarella. Easy as that. Well, thanks for joining us here today at Hillside Harvest Homestead. I hope that that has encouraged you today to be able to go make your own mozzarella. It really is easy. It's quick. It's simple. And the mozzarella is awesome. It's absolutely great. Um, so go try it and have fun and enjoy it. Hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.